Welcome to Coffee with Guillem in association with Premier Sports. You'll have this conversation, coffee, at 12 p.m. British Summer Time every Friday. So where do we start today? I could tell you why I'm in Ibiza, but maybe I'll leave that for the end. And we should, we should have a look at what happened yesterday. There were 35 signings in La Liga, some of them big names, Cavani, arriving to Valencia. He had offers from uh, Villarreal, for instance, but uh, decided to, um, uh, the two-year that was offered by Valencia was a more interesting proposition, and Valencia will definitely appreciate that, especially now that Maxi Gomez has gone to, uh, to Fenerbahce. Sevilla uh, were kind of forced to do things as it became clear that with the squad that they had was not enough. The results have been poor at the start of the season, and six new faces came to uh, are going to help Lopetegui to get to the target, which is to be top four. Out of those, Janusai is a clever signing. He's, he comes for free. Dolberg uh, again, Kasper Dolberg, the um, the Danish uh, centre forward, is not again. He's not one of those forwards that guarantees twenty five goals, but. He helps others, midfielders mostly, to get into the box. He can hold the ball, he can link up well. So between him and um, Nasiri and, and of course Isco, another one of the of the arrivals, you should expect Sevilla to score more goals. Uh, at the moment, it's about not conceding them. And, uh, and the two signings at the back, have make an impression. Marcao because he's been injured. And Ian So because he's uh, a young centre back that uh, should make an impact in the long term. So difficult times for Sevilla because Villarreal have started so well the season and uh, it seems like they are willing to take over the place in the top four. Uh, we will see. Villarreal have, have been clever in the market as well. Not so much for the new names that will be in the squad, like Mojica, really good uh, left back, or Comandante Morales, who has arrived from Levante, but because Jeremy Pino didn't go, uh, Samu Chuesa didn't go, and, and Gerard Moreno didn't go. So the team will grow based on the work that has been put in the previous years and the tutelage of Unai Emery. All the stuff that happened in the last day of the transfer deadline, all the stuff that happened in the last day of the transfer market was that Carlos Soler went to a PSG, so let's see how Valencia replaces him. The thing that he uh, wanted to make sure if he was going to leave was that he was going to uh, allow Valencia to earn money even though he's got 10 months left in his contract and 18 million plus four, even though in a, in a way it's a bargain of the... Um, of, of the market certainly has left money to uh, to Valencia. Uh, Omar Sadik, uh, the strike of Almeria, has gone to Real Sociedad, the most expensive signing of uh, Real Sociedad in history, and uh, and I think is um, is an update, a positive update on on Isaac. I think Omar Sadik is a regular goal scorer. First of all, adds more than than Isaac. He's got pace as well. He's strong. Uh, he's got this strange kind of run that looks like clumsy, but actually he always takes the balls with him and uh, and he's a great finisher. So uh, that will guarantee goals for a Real Sociedad that attacks like Manchester City in a way, building from the back and everybody involved and through the middle. And that's how they build up, but attack like, uh, like Liverpool through the centre and a lot of uh, players in the middle and when somebody has got the ball on the edge of the uh, box there's a lot of players running in behind a lot, of, a lot of movement and a lot of quality with Bryce Mendes who's just arrived of course with Take Kubo also new uh, Momo Cho the youngster 18 year old forward and Silva Merino Oyarzabal still to arrive what a great side this Real Sociedad is. And Barcelona uh, also gave us stories uh, in the last couple of days. First of all, uh, Barcelona and Inter Milan spoke about Jordi Alba. Do you want Jordi Alba? And uh, Inter Milan went, actually, maybe. And when Jordi was asked, he was like, I'm not moving. Two-year contract still left. I want to stay put. 
but he's not the number one choice as a left back now and there are three uh, that uh, Barcelona will be able to um, choose from because even though Marcus Alonso did not sign within the deadline uh, because he's a free agent now he'll be able to sign today uh, Hector Bellerin arrived at the last minute uh, free agent as well why did Arsenal didn't want to get any money for him one because they save wages uh, by letting him go two they felt that the player had to had to play he was going to do it more often at Barcelona and three because they kept a considerable sum uh, of, of in, in the possibility of him moving on so if he goes to another team there's a percentage I think it could be up to uh, 25% that Arsenal will get of that transfer fee. So it's a good deal for really everyone. Xavi wanted a right back, wanted uh, the left back situation sorted, wanted a centre midfielder with Bernardo Silva. Um, there, was, there wasn't even an offer for Bernardo Silva. It was actually only PSG that uh, put money on the table for him, but he's decided to stay put, maybe a next year. In any case, Xavi wanted somebody of that calibre in the midfield because he feels he still haven't got that midfielder. And, um, and Practically everything that Barcelona, that wa Barcelona, practically everything that Barcelona wanted to do this summer, they've done it. They've changed the squad completely, and you have to say the candidates for everything. The problem with um, with Barcelona is that uh, even though they, it's eleven players with one ball, they do it the complicated way. There is a lot of things that have to happen for Barcelona to play well, and when they play well, is when they win at the highest stage against the biggest names and against the biggest clubs they uh, don't just win anyway they have to do it in a style that has to be put in place uh, with the new names that perhaps are not so much so or so used that perhaps are not so used to um, to uh, to the way that Xavi wants them to play it will happen let's see how long it takes for it to happen let me choose some of the games that you'll be able to see in Premier Sports on Saturday, for instance, because there are Champions League games uh, next week. You'll have the big guns. Real Madrid, for instance, will play Betis. That's top of the table clash. A Betis that has registered everyone that they needed, uh, including uh, William Jose, who was left to be the last one. But that means that the squad is still very, very strong. Uh, they have lost uh, Bellerin, but they remain one of the uh, candidates to be Champions League contenders, certainly. Against Real Madrid, that uh, with Chouameni and Rudiger, they are a better side. Ancelotti insists on this. They actually uh, have got a year of getting used to Ancelotti, but more than that, a lot of alternative, especially in midfield, a lot of energy. Now with Camavinga being more solid, uh, with Chouameni replacing Casemiro, and has done really, really well in that position. Valverde, who's growing as well. Ceballos, who will be more important. And Marcos Asensio, who will come back into the reckoning because uh, he was out as Real Madrid thought that he was going to leave his in. And you'll see more of him. Uh, Sevilla, Barcelona. Now, it's at Sevilla and fans a little bit unrested because they feel that Sevilla haven't done the homework that they should have done. There were limits in the terms in terms of financial fair play and limits as well in uh, because not everybody that they wanted to sell went. Ocampos has, has gone. Uh, Tecatito Corona is injured in a long term. These are two important players up front. But let's see what Casper uh, Delberg uh, can do for them up front. I think he can go straight away into the side. And the city, an alternative. And Isco needs a while, physically still not well. Barcelona, on the other hand, uh, they obviously didn't do well against Rayo and they had fantastic moments against Valladolid. But against Sevilla is the first test of this uh, Xavi side, the first serious test. Uh, it will be fascinating to see how they battle against what it is, a very physical side, that when they play high tempo, makes life difficult for Barcelona and anybody else. And Real Sociedad Atlético Madrid. I love Real Sociedad, the way they play, uh, the way they um, they insist on the idea, even when sometimes doesn't work. And interestingly enough, despite their quality of front, it's actually the good defending that's making them so good and perhaps, again, candidates to to be uh, or contenders anyway for the top four. And Atletico Madrid, if they get it right, if they get it right, they could fight for the league. And I know it doesn't seem that way in, in with the results so far. 
with a defeat to uh, to Villarreal, uh, but they did well against against Valencia. They were solid. Uh, Valencia had a lot of opportunities, but eventually Atletico Madrid took the three points uh, in the way that Simeone do that. Score and then defend yourself, and they did that well. So those are the big games of the weekend. You watch them on Premier Sports, but every other game of La Liga will be there as well from Friday to Monday. So keep an eye on uh, the channels, what is on, and the times as well. And, oh, I need to tell you what I'm doing in Ibiza, no? Just wait. <laughs>